the godfather of soul, the grandfather of hip-hop, the hardest working man in the music industry. These may seem like disparate titles, but they were all given to the same man, James Brown, the inventor of funk. James Brown hails from Barnwell, South Carolina in the inner coastal plain region. At a very young age, he and his aunt moved to Augusta, Georgia, and he stayed there until he hit his adolescence. James got his introduction to music from singing in his local church group in Augusta, Georgia. After a small stint in prison for petty theft, he joined the Avons, later named the Famous Flames. The band's leader, Bobby Bird, was the brother of Sarah Bird, a member of James's church choir, which led the two to meeting in 1952. The two would form a musical and business partnership that would span decades. The Flames toured around the southeast, they weren't very profitable, but they kept the act going into the 1950s. After signing a record deal with Federal Records in 1956, James Brown recorded his debut single, Please, Please, Please. While the single initially didn't exceed expectations, the song later reached into the top 10 of the R&B charts, peaking at number 6. The Rolling Stone later put it on their 500 Greatest Songs of All Time list, having this to say about the single. A screaming burst of R&B. It had been in the Flames act for two years before they put down a demo, and kicking off with Brown's shriek, the single drove women wild and became his set closer. He spent two and a half years trying to rekindle the fire of please, please, please. In early 1959, Brown hit a spark, and he crafted the fire into his next chart topper, Try Me which catapulted Brown to the top of the Billboard R&B charts and managed to sneak him a spot in Billboard's top 50 pop records. His next two songs performed rather lacklusterly, making I Want You So Bad and Good Good Lovin' less than chart toppers. These songs didn't mean he didn't have it in him, he just slowed it down a bit and made some ballad songs like Bewildered, I Don't Mind, and Baby You're Right. Even some oddball songs like the mashed potatoes, and as well as some cuts like Night Train, which yet again hit number one in R&B, and 27 in the pop charts. Most of these songs, the Flames would take on tour with them, and when they eventually went and toured at the Apollo, they recorded their live album, Live at the Apollo, which shot up the Billboard charts, peaking at number two. The Rolling Stone put Live at the Apollo at 25, on the top 500 albums, right between Fleetwood Mac's Rumors and Stevie Wonder's Inner Visions. Quote, perhaps the greatest live album ever recorded. This was about the time when James Brown's extreme showmanship began to show. He started wearing capes of all different kinds and went under names like the hardest working man in the music industry and Mr. Dynamite. He'd have continued success well through 1963 and 64, with the main event being a follow-up to Live at the Apollo, Pure Dynamite, Live at the Royal. While it wasn't as popular as its predecessor, it was by no means a slow album. Not long after, he released Papa's Got a Brand New Bag, which was a stepping stone to his new genre that was slowly emerging, known as funk. His next well-known piece was It's a Man's 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 World which is somewhat attributed to being a socially conscious piece about civil rights and the Vietnam War. After four years of touring and other escapades, and switching out band members, leaving Bird and Brown the only original members of the lineup, they started with songs like Get On Up and Super Bad. They did these songs in the new genre of funk, which was kind of a combination of rhythm and blues, soul, rock, and had instrumentation like slap bass licks, moderately distorted guitar, piano and synthesizer, drums, orchestral elements, and backing vocals. Subsequently, the group signed on to a new record deal and then proceeded to get 10 top 10 R&B hits against the backdrop of acts like Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, and the Isley Brothers. As Brown reached an older age, he was given the name the Godfather of Soul. While only being 40, in music terms, 40 is about like 70. These sounds would somewhat be his last hits, because during the mid-70s, 
Brown began to drift from the public eye. He only had a few sparse hits during the 70s and 80s. He'd never have the highs of consistent success he had back in his heyday. He still toured, even to large concert halls and auditoriums, but never like he used to. He'd go on to write two books about his life. To quote one of them, When I'm on stage, I'm trying to do one thing, bring people joy, just like church does. People don't go to church to find trouble, they go there to lose it. After a fight with cancer, then pneumonia in 2006, James Brown passed away at the age of 73, having cemented himself as a musical legend.